Hey, it's High Tech Dad here, and through the power of Twitter, I was able to get my hands on a droid from Verizon. You can see the Motorola logo right there as it starts up. I only have this for about a week to play with, so I'm trying to crank out a quick review of it. You can see it's a fairly slim, very tech-looking device. There you can see the droid powering up. The best part is coming up. Let's see if it's going to do it. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I had to wait for that one. So basically, it's a Android-powered phone, and it's using Android 2.0 version. And that's the latest version. I think this is the only device out there right now that I know of that is currently running the 2.0 version. You can see the form factor as it compares to an iPhone is roughly the same. It's uh, slightly heavier. Um, but everything else is pretty similar. As you can see, they both have cameras. Um, but anyway, I'll quickly go through some things here. Uh, it is slightly heavier than the iPhone, but it really feels solid in terms of the metal that it's made with. So, And the screen is a little bit bigger as well, and the resolution is in actually pretty incredible on the screen, much better than the, than the iPhone. The other nice thing is it does have a slide out keypad um, and I'll talk a little bit about the keypad and you can read more about the droid on my blog at www.hitechdad.com I go into some of the pluses and, and minuses about this new cell phone. So I'm opening this up here. You can see sort of the same traditional type of interface that you see with Android devices. You have a little uh, application tab bar that you can just slide up here and scroll through any applications that you can uh, that you may have installed on the from the Google uh, marketplace um, what else do we have here um, let me go through some of the other things just in terms of the the physical side uh, the camera actually has a dedicated button to take pictures sort of in the way you would a traditional camera you have a regular headphone jack on the top, power button, lock button, uh, um, I believe that's a micro USB slot, and uh, then the battery and everything is in the back. So here you can see there's a 5 megapixel camera and a dual LED light and it's actually pretty bright. So let me jump actually right into the, um, the camera because it is kind of kind of fun. I, I blinded some coworkers when I fired it up. So the camera, like I said, is five megapixels, and you can shoot uh, video or take pictures. And so there, can you see how bright that is? I'm going to take a picture again of the of the screen here. You can see it's really blinding. So uh, there I am filming the the video. So pretty cool. Um, and here you can see actually uh, the the keyboard. There's an on-screen keyboard that you can do horizontally. I'm I'm more used to this using uh, the iPhone, and this is actually where I can move pretty quickly. Um, and you can also, if you turn the the orientation uh, vertically, it'll go into um, a vertical, a smaller keypad, just like the iPhone. So there it is vertically and I don't think it switches automatically when you're in the quick search so let me try it again here uh, no okay anyway so some other cool things you can have regular email and actually what I've done here is I have uh, combined my email accounts let me see what's going on here okay trying that again so I have my two email accounts one of these is an exchange account one of them is my regular email account. It's pretty good, although there is one thing that I think is is uh, a pretty big flaw in the email design is that once you're in um, looking at messages it's uh, it's hard to to actually move any messages into folders. So I could like select a message just by clicking on that but there is there's mark unread add star delete but there is no way 
to move it to any of your folders and that's true on the exchange side so that's a little frustrating i'm hoping that google might uh, update that sometime in the future you uh, can do corporate email and so here i have something uh, in my corporate email that sh or sorry corporate calendaring and it syncs and you can uh, do all sorts of of uh, messaging around uh, in terms of, of calendaring, you can accept meeting requests and reject them and that sort of thing. The other thing that you should download if you are doing it with Exchange is um, the corporate directory. Uh, this doesn't come out of the box, but it's free in the Google Store and it just allows you to hook into your uh, Exchange uh, directory services. So that's a nice thing. The other great thing. Um, and you can read about that in the blog, is this uh, application called Car Home. And this is Google's beta version of uh, uh, Google Navigation, which is really fantastic. I mean, this is an entirely uh, different review in itself. Um, but basically, you can do a voice search and, and search for, for something... Um, and it'll look it up on Google, it'll show you a map of it, and then um, you can navigate directly to it. The navigation, since I'm stationary, it doesn't make sense for me to show it, but the navigation basically um, speaks the street names and everything like that. You can overlay traffic, you can uh, overlay satellite imagery, um, and then the really cool thing that, that I really like, sort of a nice added touch, was when you arrive at your destination, it actually pulls up Street View so that you can see what your your uh, the location looks like. So uh, that's great about Google Navigation. Uh, the other thing that's great about it is it's free. I wish I had it on on my iPhone, and I think a lot of the other GPS manufacturers out there are going to be uh, freaking out a little bit about it. So um, so talked about calendaring corporate email. The browsing is, is fast and really easy to use. Um, the screen resolution is, is really awesome. You can browse in landscape or portrait. Again, here you can see the, the keyboard pop up. It's full screen or you can open it up and, and type this way. So that reminds me. The thing I don't like about the keyboard, while you have this little directional pad right here, it, because of its placement, it kind of forces the keyboard over to the left, which makes it a little bit unnatural. So um, instead of being what I would think this being the center, it's over here. So this side of my finger is a little cramped versus this side. So I didn't really like the design choice on that. The other thing that I don't like, and it's kind of hard to see, but the, the keys themselves are not raised, they're kind of flattened. It's like a reverse bubble wrap. And it makes it kind of hard for me to find my orientation. I can't quite find where the, the, the main keys are that, that I would uh, center my typing on. Although there are little bumps, as you can see over the F and the J there. Um, there are little bumps to help you, but you can barely notice it. So next design, I'd say either eliminate the keyboard and just stick to the on-screen completely or uh, or uh, shift the keyboard over and get rid of the D-pad. So that's about it. It's a fast device, fairly responsive. Um, there were some lag times when I was typing things. Um, I do like the haptic uh, feedback. Uh, when you click on on different things or on these buttons here the the screen or the whole device vibrates um, the Google um, Android uh, operating system is awesome so uh, I don't know I think this is a really big contender for dethroning the iPhone um, I don't think it'll quite get to the iPhone level but if iPhones didn't exist or went away, this would probably be the device I would get at this point. Anyway, so it's High Tech Dad. Feel free to follow me on Twitter as at High Tech Dad and ask me any questions that you may have about the droid. Um, and read my full review on www.hightechdad.com. Thanks.